name is Yvonne Campbell and I'm the General Secretary of the Congregational Federation and it's my pleasure to welcome you to our first Congregational Festival to celebrate Congregational Sunday. So here I am in my home church, Wavertree Congregational Church in Liverpool, to tell you all about it. Our theme is rainbows and God's promises. And we hope that through these different tents um, and through this festival, we can share the good news of Jesus. Hello friends, greetings to all of you, my friends, my brothers and sisters in Christ and friends from the Congregational Church Fellowship. Grace and peace be with you all today. Now I want to welcome you to Confess 2020, a celebration of all our Congregational Churches and Fellowship together. But before I say a few opening words that I've been asked to, I just wanted to ask you to do something with me. Today is a time of celebration. So if I say, just a way of beginning the celebration, if I say the words, God is good, I want you, wherever you are today, just respond with these words all the time. And when I say all the time, you respond, God is good. So let us try this. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Fantastic. My name is Fode Kamara. I'm the minister at Chinle Independent Chapel, located in the beautiful High Peak District in rural Derbyshire. It is my privilege to be asked uh, to bring a few greetings and to say a few opening words for our celebrations this year. Here at Chinle Chapel, we celebrate Congregational Sunday uh, as our as our uh, anniversary Sunday service. So today uh, we join with the wider Congregational uh, Fellowship family as we celebrate Confess 2020 together. We join with national, nationally and internationally, join with all other bodies as we celebrate God's love for us. But friends, these are strange times indeed. Today we journey in the age of coronavirus. We journey with life under lockdown, social distancing, and the recent protest of Black Lives Matters. As all these important events continue to impact our community and the world in many different ways, it is true to say that our Congregational Family motto of unity in diversity provides a very helpful message for our world today in our time of turmoil. Each member, each church, each community very independent and unique and different but all together we belong to God and we are God's community. The New Testament Greek word for this such a community is koinonia, a true sense of community, a community of love and solidarity. Friends, this is the community that I pray that God will empower us to build a community that reflects such a vision, a vision of a true koinonia. Friends, brothers and sisters in Christ, we gather today with different stories to tell. Some of us have got stories of lament, stories of hope, stories of love, stories of many different experiences about new ideas, new ways of doing internet church, Zoom church, telephone church, droplets of leaflets into members, all this huge diversity and many ways that we've managed to cope, that God has blessed us with. These are stories that we share with one another today. Celebrating Confest is a way of bringing all these stories together and to give thanks to God for truly seeing us through this time of hardship. Please, let me encourage you with some words from the psalm. And I would like to read from Psalm 100, some words of encouragement uh, as we begin our celebration today. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all the earth. 
Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us. We are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name for the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Friends, sisters and brothers, now let us join together and give thanks. Let us make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Let us sing with songs of gladness to our God. May God bless this time of fellowship for us. And thank you. God bless you. Genesis chapter 15 verses 1 to 6 After this the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision Do not be afraid Abraham I am your shield your very great reward But Abraham said Sovereign Lord what can you give me since I remain childless and the one who will inherit my estate is Eliezer of Damascus and Abraham said, You have given me no children, so a servant in my household will be my heir. Then the word of the Lord came to him, This man will not be your heir, 
but a son who is your own flesh and blood will be your heir. He took him outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars, if indeed you can count them. Then he said to him, So shall your offspring be. Abraham believed the Lord, and he credited it to him as righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Hello. In a time of uncertainty and personal loss, on such a scale as we've seen over these last months, it's a good time to spend a few moments reflecting on the promises of God. Uh, we all know what promises are, what they mean, and the Bible is a, a, a tapestry of promises that God has made to us. In the Hebrew Bible, in the Old Testament, um, they're expressed in a certain kind of a way. What we think of as being promises uh, is normally applied to men and women, what they do, vows that they would make. When God makes a promise, it's something more like a statement of intent, whether that comes through a prophet or through a dream or some other way of communicating with people. It's the word of God coming to someone. Uh, in, as we move into the New Testament, then uh, a new vocabulary, a new way of speaking about the promises of God is developed, especially by Paul. Uh, and so famously, he says that as many promises that God has made uh, are yes and amen in Christ. Now, to move away from um, abstracts like that into people would be helpful just at this stage. So we're going to just consider two people that you'd know very well, uh, Abraham and Mary, uh, both recipients of wonderful promises from God uh, that they would have miracle children, miracles in different ways with Abraham and his wife, Sarah, they, they were unable to have children and they were old and God was promising that they would have a child. With Mary, of course, uh, it's at the other end, she's a young woman, she's not in a relationship with a man, but the angel, is telling her that she will have this very, very special child, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, what strikes us, there's many things that join these two stories together, many things that we could talk about, but the key thing, I think, for all of us is the faith in which Abraham and Mary receive these words from God. And not even just the faith, but the wholehearted faith that um, throws themselves into it. Uh, promise of God is believed and the Abraham and Mary move on to see what how this is going to work out so everything's okay isn't it it's going to work out just fine but for both of them uh, things didn't go straightforwardly Abraham's journey from that point on is is quite messy in a lot of ways and he must have wondered how all these things were going to work their way through there were strains on relationships and um, times at which he seems to have been uh, outside of the real purposes of god and for mary though we we see less of her story uh, early on we are told through simeon this this prophet who is at the, the temple that a sword would pierce her own soul. So the promise, real though it is, and certain that it is that it's going to take place, doesn't mean that uh, those who receive the promise are going to necessarily be on a very straightforward journey with God. Now there is uh, a pattern that's often talked about when we look at prophecy, which is another form of, of promise really. Um, and it goes like this, just quickly. If you look at a far range of hills, you see the general shape of these hills and you can get an idea of what the mountain range is like. But as you get closer to it, to the foothills of that range, then you begin to see the shapes become more clear and you understand uh, the lay of the land. And people have often used that as a way of explaining how the promises of God work. Um, since moving to Dundee, which is where I'm speaking from, um, I found something very different that's happened. Uh, the highest point in Dundee 
is called the Law. It's an old word meaning just a big hill. And it was an extinct volcano. That's the highest point there. And you can go up to the top, you can drive or walk. And on one side, you can across the River Tay, you can see the Kingdom of Fife, the ancient Kingdom of Fife. And on the other side, you can look into the Perthshire Mountains and see many of the, the peaks there that are recognisable by um, their shape. So you'd think that, that that's a good example. But I've frequently gone to those places, I'm right to where the mountains are, and you, as you're driving through, you find you're on perhaps a single track um, road, and you don't really know where you are at all. All the, uh, the peaks seem to have gone, you just seem to be there on your own, and you turn around a corner, and suddenly then uh, a picture is of, of a, a mountain peak is staring right at you that you do recognise. And I think that's the way that Abraham journeyed, and I would guess that that's the way that Mary journeyed as well, as she began to understand the things that this promise really meant. So let's talk about you. Let's talk about the promises God has made to you. Well, there are promises in Scripture uh, for all of us, whether they come as um, statements, or blessings even. Blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they will see God. That sounds true for all of us. But what about you if God has made a personal word to you, if he's said something to you? This is what happens very often when we start to understand our calling, how we're going to serve God. But it could be many other kinds of ways. At a time of, of crisis, God has spoken. How are we to um, take hold of that promise and go with it. Well, I think it will be the same way that we have just discussed. God knows the shape of it and he will make that shape of it clear to us from time to time. But at other times, we are there just trying to find our way, trusting, having that faith. And that is really what he is looking for when he's made a promise, either if it's in scripture or to you in your life or for your family to respond in faith and keep looking for those signs. They will appear. <laughs>
let us pray. Father, we praise and applaud you for the carnival of creation, for animals that run, trundle, frolic, jump, race, climb, wriggle and swim, for fish that leap and dive, for the colours of sunset and dawn, of mountain seas, minerals, fresh green grass, flowers, trees and so much more. The sound of babbling brooks, the beating of wings, the bird and the coo of a dove, and for the cry of an infant, for music, laughter and song, for giggling children, for clashes of thunder and lightning, and the sound of crashing waves on the shore, for the smell of rain, freshly cut hay and a fragrant rose. We praise you for the celebration of our food, the taste, the sweet, sour, texture, crunchy, smooth, and cold ice cream and hot curry. We celebrate and applaud each other for families, love, friendship, care, companionship, comfort, sacrifice, and vulnerability, for being one, for being your people, for being your community, your church. Amen. Amen. Dear Lord, we are sorry for doing or not doing what has pleased you. We are sorry for not following the path you have directed us on. Lord, we are sorry for speaking negatively about ourselves and others. Lord, we are sorry for getting stressed, anxious, angry and frustrated. Lord, bring us peace in those times. Wash those feelings away and bring your light to us and bring your spirit to us. Lord, we are sorry for not standing up for what is right. Lord, we are sorry for not seeing the injustices. Lord, be with us at this time. Lord, we are sorry. Forgive us, help us, heal us and protect us. We ask for your mercy and thank you for the blood of Jesus that we can be forgiven. Mm. In your almighty name, amen. 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 Father, we bring the world before you now. We ask for peace, Lord. Not the peace that the world know, but your peace, the peace that passes any the peace that passes understanding, Lord. Lord, I pray for justice, for compassion, for unity, Lord, for solution. So many problems around the world, Lord. And I declare in Jesus' name, any division between nations be broken out in the name of Jesus. Lord, you are land, you are land from diseases, from, from this horrible virus, from coronavirus. I say no more to coronavirus. I say no more to anxiety. I say no more to depression. I say no more to any mental illness, Lord. Lord, Give wisdom amongst the world leaders. Forgive us sins as we forgive their mistakes in the middle of a crisis, Lord. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Father God, we pray for the ministers of our churches throughout the land, that they continue to be faithful to you and your church, especially during these trying times when physical contact is mostly denied. May we hold our congregations in our hearts. We pray for those in need, for those who find life a bitter struggle, those whose lives are clouded by death or loss, by pain or disability, by discouragement or fear, by shame or rejection. We thank you, Lord, for the aid agencies who are able to take vital food and clothing. Lord, we pray for the restoration of lives and homes and for the needs of the children. Give strength to those members of our fellowship 
who are facing ill health, especially those who are struggling mentally due to the lockdown and for those who are facing financial difficulty or even job loss. We pray especially for those who have been affected by the ravages of the virus, have lost loved ones without the ability to say goodbye. Lord, be with them in their grieving. Show them your love, bring them health and wholeness. We give thanks for the nursing staff and all key workers who have continued to work during the lockdown, ensuring food on our tables, education for our children, and safety on the streets by all our vital services. We pray for and thank you for those who are working to find a vaccine so that we never ever have to encounter times like this again. We give thanks for the gift of family, friends and neighbours in these days when we are kept apart. You, O oh God, are our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Help us, Lord, to be continually aware of all people around us, especially those in need. Give us eyes to see some of those in need and the wisdom to know how to help. Lord God, assist us to be your hands and feet as we seek to serve others right where we are. May we be your light during these dark days. We ask these things in and through the precious name of Jesus Christ our Lord and Saviour. Amen. 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 Let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, our Father who art in, in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come. come. Thy will be done, be done on, on earth as it, as it is in, in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, us this day our daily bread, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as we forgive, forgive those, those who trespass against us. us. And lead us mm. not into temptation, but deliver, but deliver us, us from, from evil. evil. For thine is kingdom, the kingdom, the power, the power and, the glory, and the glory, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. 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 Amen.
the Lord said, this is how you to bless them. Say to them, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Thank you. 